Hello and welcome to the program. I'm Tenyo Lashubawale. It's day 128 of the Russian invasion of Ukraine. And Ukrainian officials say at least 20 people, including a child, have died in overnight Russian missile strikes on Ukraine's southern Odessa region. Moscow denies responsibility. And in other developments, Ukraine's leaders have signed a declaration of intent to join the EU. The EU chief told Ukraine's parliament earlier today that EU membership was within reach, but she urged the country to press forward with anti-corruption reforms. Let's take a look at the latest development. Rescuers combed the rubble for survivors of what Ukrainian authorities say was a deadly Russian missile strike on an apartment block near the Black Sea port of Odessa. The attack came hours after Russian troops were driven off the strategic nearby outcrop of Snake Island in the victory for Ukraine that could be a step towards reopening Odessa's port. Russia seized the desolate island on the war's first day and used it to control the northeastern Black Sea and blockade Odessa and other ports. In his nightly video address, President Vladimir Zelensky said retaking it would, quote, limit the actions of the occupiers. According to officials, most of those killed in the apartment block strike, which used long-range missiles, were fast asleep. Two holiday camps nearby were also reportedly hit, killing at least three people, including a child. The Kremlin has denied striking the apartment block, repeating its assertion that it does not target civilians in what it calls a special operation to root out nationalists. Ukraine calls it an unprovoked war of aggression. Russia has escalated deadly attacks deep in Ukraine in recent days, far from the front lines. In Kyiv, lawmakers with Zelensky at the helm marked a minute silence for those killed in Odessa. They gave a standing ovation as the flag of the European Union was carried through the chamber to stand alongside Ukraine's own. Ukraine was granted formal EU candidate status last week. Ursula von der Leyen, head of the European Commission, offered a message of support by video link. Ukraine now has a very clear European perspective. And Ukraine is candidate country to join the European Union. Something that seemed almost unimaginable just five months ago. So today is first and foremost a moment to celebrate this historic milestone, a victory of determination and resolve, and a victory for the whole movement that started eight years ago on the Maidan. Today I come here with a very simple message. There's a long road ahead, but Europe will be at your side every step of the way for as long as it takes, from these dark days of war until the moment you cross the door that leads into our European Union. Russia has focused its main ground campaign on eastern Ukraine, where it demands Kyiv cede full control of two provinces to pro-Russian separatist proxies. Meanwhile, Russia has begun shipping grain from territory its forces are occupying in Ukraine. A pro-Russian regional official, uh, Savzia, uh, says a vessel carrying 7,000 tons of cereal has left the port city of Berdyansk to go to friendly countries. Kiev has for weeks accused Russia of sealing its grain from southern Ukraine, something Moscow has denied and blocking ports contributing to global food shortages. The grain shipment marks the opening of a sea route to export wheat from Ukraine to other countries. The VOA's Anna Chenikova joins us now for more on the situation in Ukraine. Anna, thank you so much for joining us on the program. Good evening. Firstly, let's talk about the, that attack in Odessa. Russia is denying responsibility. And last we heard, rescuers were searching for survivors. Uh, what's the update on that? Uh, yeah, uh, so tonight, uh, 
on the night. Um, we uh, adapted to the attack by Russian forces. Uh, this is no question. Uh, of course, uh, Russian side was probably denied, but uh, we all understand that uh, this war is happening. From, you know, it was started by Russia, so uh, it's no question who actually um, striped uh, the building, the, res the residential building and the hotel complex. So what we know for the moment that nine-story residential building was. Uh, very, uh, very badly damaged. Uh, one block uh, is completely destroyed, uh, and also two hotel, um, two hotel complex were were also attacked. Uh, for the moment, we have confirmed 21 casualties, 21 people killed, including one child of 12 years old, uh, a boy. Uh, the rescue operation is going on. Uh, rescue team is. Uh, uh, is still trying to remove all the rubble and the hope to find, you know, some people alive. But unfortunately, the number of victims could grow. Um, uh, this happened just uh, next, uh, you know, uh, next 12 hours after Ukrainian forces uh, finally and completely um, liberated Zmini Island, which is also a desert region. Uh, uh, that's a point. Uh, it's a very strategic point because this is exactly how Ukraine could now keep control over the Black Sea in this area. Uh, so probably uh, as Russia is, you know, doing uh, for the past five months after successful operations, military um, ta complete completion of military tasks by Ukrainian forces, Russia is trying to, uh, you know, pay back uh, by killing uh, civilians. So probably this also could be connected. Uh, unfortunately, we have what we have, and uh, uh, and Odessa, Odessa region is trying to, you know, recover and find some, at least some uh, people alive. Uh, but we'll see what huge numbers are going to have it by the end of the day. Yeah, really tragic situation there, Anna. Um, but let's shift focus to um, Parliament now. We know Ukraine has signed a declaration of intent to join the EU, with the EU chief speaking in Parliament earlier and President Zelensky calling for a speedier process. Speak to us about that. Yeah, that was a historic moment, definitely historic moment for Ukraine and the uh, Ukrainian Parliament as well. Um, officially, uh, the EU flag was installed just next to the Ukrainian flag, and uh, of course, we understand that uh, this um, the candidacy to EU that Ukraine got last week uh, basically creates this you know roadmap for Ukraine for the next uh, decades or years. We'll see, but of course, Ukraine uh, hopes and Ukrainian society in particular and. Ukrainian government uh, has hoped that it's not going to take case, uh, but years. Uh, we all understand that this is not a very fast, um, you know, route. Uh, but Ukraine will definitely uh, do uh, maximum what uh, the country can do to join you as soon as possible. Um, today uh, we heard again um, one of the main criteria that uh, both EU and Ukrainian society. Uh, is demanding from the Ukrainian government on this EU route uh, the anti corruption uh, reform. And um, we hope that this would be reforms, uh, this re reforms would be a priority for Ukrainian government. At least this is what President Zelensky uh, stated once again that um, Ukrainian parliament should go through. Uh, a, a very long list of reforms uh, and uh, to put anti-corruption reform uh, at the top. And uh, we, you know, expect that by the end, uh, well, uh, that by the end of the year, this big list would be uh, mostly fulfilled in terms of the voting in the parliament. But uh, anti-corruption reform and the appointment of the heads of anti-corruption um, structures would have uh, very soon. This is the hope, so we will see. Uh, of course, uh, Ukraine uh, once again uh, confirmed and once again pointed out that the only you know, future for Ukraine is EU future. And this war, which is happening right now, is also you know, war for 
free Europe and protection of the values uh, and rule, rule, uh, rule of law uh, in Europe. So um, Ukraine just, you know, getting ready to a very hard work. And uh, Ukrainian society has a lot of hope in terms of uh, all these reforms to be um, bring into life. All right, and another update we're monitoring is also uh, reports that Russia has started grain shipments from occupied territory. Um, help us understand what's happening there and the reactions from Ukrainian officials. Well, basically, this not just started, it continues. But uh, just recently, Russian uh, forces, well, Russian side targets, uh, so they started to um, export um, well, grain from Bagdad, which is the provisional region. So it, uh, before it was only Kherson region, at, at least as, as far as we know. Uh, so this is just another act of, um, well, another crime, and uh, it, it's nothing else. Uh, Ukrainian government once again uh, highlighted that this is uh, not just a war crime, it's a crime on the international level is breakage of any possible laws uh, of the civilized world. Uh, we know that Russia will try, well, at least what, what Russian side says, that they will sell this grain to the friendly countries. Um, we know that, uh, in particular, Syria uh, is buying the grains, and uh, we know from a previous report that uh, a lot of tons of grains have already been uh, sold by Russia to Syria. Also, we know that Russia is trying to uh, to export the grains to Egypt. Uh, so um, the reaction is well remains basically the same that this is a crime. Uh, so uh, this is a stolen grain, and the Ukrainian government. Uh, is asking uh, all the countries uh, who might be involved just to, you know, be very careful with this brain because this is, uh, this is, you know, a crime. All right, then the VOA's Anna Chenikova, thank you so much for bringing us up to speed on the situation in the country and do have a lovely weekend. Some other developments now. Finnish Foreign Minister Pekka Haviso says uh, Turkey and Finland did not discuss the extradition of any specific individuals or groups of people during negotiations at the NATO summit in Madrid earlier this week. Turkish President Tayyip Erdogan on Thursday said Finland and Sweden must keep promises of extraditions made during the talks or ratifications of the Nordic nations' NATO memberships will not be sent to the Turkish parliament. At the Madrid summit, NATO's invited Finland and Sweden into the alliance, a decision that still needs ratification from all the 30 member states. The invitation was made possible after Turkey dropped its veto against the two countries' progress to membership following four hours of talks on Tuesday. Well, this week, NATO met in Spain for what has been described as one of their most important gatherings in years, with the military alliance seeking to present as unified a front as possible in light of Russia's continuing aggression in Ukraine. The NATO summit in Madrid drew to a close on Thursday with decisions to transform and strengthen the alliance. Allied leaders agreed on a fundamental shift in NATO's deterrence and defense, with strengthened forward defenses and enhanced battle groups in the eastern part of the alliance and an increase in the number of high readiness forces to well over 300,000. Leaders also agreed to invest more in NATO and to increase common funding. During the summit, NATO's closest partners, Finland and Sweden, as we mentioned earlier, were invited to join the alliance, a significant boost to Euro-Atlantic security. Allies further agreed on long-term support for Ukraine through a strengthened comprehensive assistance package.